Following a failed heist, an art thief is trapped in a luxurious New York penthouse, where he is compelled to use his creativity to stay alive. As the heist begins, Nemo, disguised as a handyman, is dropped off by a pilot at a wealthy art collector's penthouse. With a narrow time frame of just seven minutes to acquire three paintings and a valuable self-portrait by Austrian painter Egon Schiele, Nemo relies on instructions from his hacker accomplice number three who guides him through a portable radio and unlocks the first door setting the plan in motion. After deactivating the house's security system, Nemo snatches the two paintings, stashing them in a bag. On his way to the master's bedroom, the thief is distracted by the art collector's family picture, featuring the collector himself, his daughter, and their dog. The daughter's blank expression catches the burglar's attention. Having successfully obtained the third painting, Nemo contacts number three, informing him that Shele's self-portrait isn't in the bedroom, contrary to their intel. With four minutes left, the thief searches the video installation room, but doesn't find the high-valued artwork. This news frustrates his accomplice, who reveals that the artwork is worth three million dollars. Upon receiving instructions from number three to grab his loot and flee, Nemo asks for the code to reactivate the security system before he leaves the penthouse. Regrettably, the thief enters the wrong code, resulting in a system malfunction and the locking of all doors. Amidst the blaring security alarm, Nemo's panic rises and he frantically shouts at his clueless accomplice. When the hacker is unable to provide assistance, he abruptly bails on the thief, leaving him to fend for himself. Confronted with no other options, Nemo attempts to disable the security system touchscreen keypad, but it proves futile. Frustrated by the blaring noise, he plugs his ears and severs the speaker wires to silence the alarm. He then plans to exit through the main door by piercing it with a sharp tool. However, the malfunctioning system also causes the house's thermostat to set the temperature to an uncomfortably hot degree, further complicating Nemo's escape plan. Overwhelmed by the unbearable heat, a thirsty Nemo pauses his escape plan and seeks water in the kitchen. He opens the owner's smart fridge, only to be alerted that supplies are running low. Spotting a bottle of vodka, Nemo takes a few gulps in an attempt to find relief from the discomfort caused by the scorching heat. With determination, Nemo persists in piercing through the wooden door, only to discover that the other side is made of steel, leaving him frustrated and hopeless. Later that night, Nemo attempts to contact number three for assistance, but receives no response. Left with no other options, he turns to the owner's smart fridge again, drinking more vodka for comfort and consuming some of the remaining food for sustenance. While flipping through TV channels, Nemo stumbles upon surveillance feeds of the whole building, including a view outside the penthouse main door. Feeling sleepy, he eventually dozes off in the daughter's bedroom. The next morning, Nemo is abruptly awakened by the sound of a helicopter coming from the penthouse roof mistakenly thinking it's his teammates rescuing him. He rushes to the window, only to see the chopper passing by. Suddenly, he notices an injured pigeon on the ground. As the temperature rises, Nemo washes his face in the indoor water installation. He tries to contact number three again, but receives no response. Feeling defeated, he heads to the penthouse office and tries to call through the phone, but realizes there's no dial tone. After examining the owner's workstation, he opens the cabinets and finds a Pritzker medal, the owner's architecture award. To momentarily escape from the reality of his dire situation, he fantasizes about winning it and brags to the duct tape man in Maurizio Catalan's untitled artwork in front of him. In the bedroom, Nemo discovers inedible and hard oranges, and he attempts to use them to break the window and escape. However, his plan fails, and he ends up throwing them into the water installation in a fit of anger and disappointment. Afterward, he looks at the ceiling and sees a skylight, inspiring him to devise another escape plan. He starts to pull furniture one by one to create a makeshift scaffold, so he can reach the light and escape through the top window. As he works on his improvised scaffold, Nemo grows increasingly thirsty due to the heat and labor. He checks the garden sprinklers and faucets, but to his dismay, no water comes out. With no other options, he goes back to the smart fridge and uses ice to quench his thirst. After Nemo works on his improvised scaffold the following day, he checks the surveillance feed on the security system, hoping to catch a glimpse of any activity outside the penthouse. To his surprise, he sees the housekeeper, who 
whom he later names Jasmine, eating on the stairs. The sight of food makes Nemo realize how hungry he is, prompting him to open one of the owner's remaining food stocks, injuring his hand in the process. Due to the rising temperature, Nemo quenches his thirst by scraping the ice off the walls of the freezer. However, the prolonged opening of the fridge triggers the blaring of Macarena, adding to his frustration. During a rainy night, Nemo improvises using a statue as a crowbar to access the stock room, where he finds some supplies. Upon hearing the sprinklers working, he quickly rushes to drink the water and take a much-needed bath. Eventually, Nemo completes his scaffold, making it tall enough for him to reach the skylight. Exhausted from the day's work, he rests and sketches Jasmine on the TV. To his surprise, he spots her cleaning on the other side of the main door, prompting him to ask for help. However, despite Nemo's attempts to get Jasmine's attention, she remains unaware due to her earphones. Frustration creeps in, but then the malfunctioning thermostat lowers the temperature, bringing relief from the oppressive heat. As Nemo enjoys the cold, he gazes at Adrian Pachi's temporary reception center in front of him. It depicts people waiting on air stairs with no plane to board, mirroring Nemo's own sense of hopelessness. The next morning, Nemo refills his bottle with the water he collected from the sprinkler. He then breaks a vase and uses its charge to improvise sunglasses, protecting his eyes as he attempts to break the skylight. However, despite his efforts, the skylight remains intact, pushing Nemo into a state of frustration and madness. As hunger sets in, a defeated Nemo prepares a meal and pretends to be a celebrity chef, explaining his culinary creations to an invisible audience and finding solace in the imaginary interaction. He also starts naming the other people he sees in the surveillance footage to keep himself entertained in his isolation. Soon after, the temperature drops further, causing Nemo to shiver. In an attempt to fix this, the thief tries to sever the wires behind the security touchpad, but nothing happens. The following morning, Nemo awakens with a reflection of sunlight on his face. As he gets up, he notices a scattered reflection of light as a result of the broken glass. When he notices a light on the wall, he draws a huge spiral around it. Afterward, Nemo finally completes breaking all the borders of the skylight and then takes a moment to rest. While doing so, he talks to the pigeon on the other side of the window, instructing it to find someone named Danny C to rescue him. Feeling mischievous, he graffitis the owner's family portrait, turning the art collector into a fiendish figure, his daughter into a spoiled princess, and the dog into an angel. After further exploration, Nemo stumbles upon a secret passageway hidden in the closet, leading to a room where he finally finds the self-portrait, a fake old man's body, and ripped pages of The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Before leaving the room, Nemo takes the self-portrait with him. That night, after sketching an imitation of Francesco Clement's watercolor painting of a girl lying sideways in his sketchbook, Nemo falls asleep. The next morning, upon waking up, he quickly rushes to the door when he sees Jasmine on the other side without her earphones. In an attempt to get the housekeeper's attention, Nemo bangs on the door loudly with a pan and tries to slip a note under the door. However, Jasmine remains clueless and doesn't hear anything. After the frustrating event, Nemo dozes off and then dreams of himself Himself as a famous artist. As he arrives in the video installation room, the penthouse owner welcomes him and later asks which side he's on. A man is an island or every man is an island. Suddenly, Nemo spots Jasmine from the crowd, who later smiles at him during the owner's opening remarks for the private art viewing. The old man introduces the puppet artwork, explaining that humans are just like puppets, controlled by unseen hands. However, Nemo doesn't finish the presentation. Instead, he ascends the air stairs, like the one from the painting, and sees the main door finally open. After waking up, Nemo turns a piece of wood into a wrench so he can open the skylight. His second attempt proves successful. Successful after correcting the mistakes from his first wooden wrench. As he slowly loses his sanity, he narrates a story of a mother and daughter discussing having chicken for dinner. Due to extreme hunger, he's forced to eat the house owner's pet fish despite its foul taste. As the day progresses, Nemo also continues his artwork on the wall. Because of his long stay in the penthouse, Nemo ends up memorizing the dialogue between the man and woman in Breda Babin's I Can't Make You Love Me video art in the installation room. The 
following day, Nemo ends up eating dog food for dinner, even putting some seasoning to improve its taste. After his unhealthy meal, he creates eccentric clothing out of the owner's items and wears it while chanting that he's lost all energy in front of his artwork. The next morning, Nemo empathizes with the duct tape man, feeling how trapped the gallerist is, and then sets him free by taking the piece off the wall. Afterward, he proceeds to unscrew the skylight panel but accidentally falls to the ground after removing the nut from a bolt, injuring his leg in the process. That night, Nemo watches a fireworks show outside while eating with a cast on his leg. Suddenly, he sees Jasmine arrive and move toward his face and body, examining him without actually touching him. When he realizes he's just hallucinating, he lies down and eventually falls asleep. The following morning, a limping Nemo heads to the bathroom to examine his teeth. However, he hallucinates the owner appearing behind him and smashing his head onto the sink, knocking him unconscious. When he awakens, a bleeding Nemo immediately notices the smoke detector on the ceiling, prompting him to create fire using strips of paper, a bowl, and a magnifying glass. After creating a makeshift torch and lighting it, Nemo positions the fire near the smoke detector. The detector activates immediately setting off the sprinklers and causing water to spray all over the penthouse. Despite his attempts to shout for help through the main door, no one hears him. Nemo then checks the surveillance footage but realizes that none of the staff were notified about the fire, frustrating him. To make matters worse, the continued showering of the water destroys the TV, cutting off his access to the surveillance feed. As Nemo surveys the flooded penthouse floor, he realizes that some of the valuable artwork is at risk of water damage, so he moves the artwork to an elevated area to save them. As the winter season sets in, a malnourished and dehydrated Nemo is still trapped inside the penthouse, reading a page of The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. While doing so, an apparition of the owner's daughter and the dog outside the penthouse stare at him. The next morning, Nemo puts the finishing touches on his makeshift art installation. Using the final nut from the bolt he unscrewed from the skylight, he positions it carefully, creating a creative representation of his own survival and determination to escape. With a renewed sense of hope, Nemo stands in front of the artwork, including two of his own, Clemente's watercolor painting and Sheila's self-portrait. He raises his hands and begins to sing that he's going to heaven on a hillside, implying that he's finally escaping his prison. As Nemo prepares to leave the pet house, he reflects on a childhood memory. He remembers his teacher asking him what are three things he'd save from a burning house. He responded with his sketchbook, an ACDC album, and his cat Groucho, while other kids had chosen to save their families. However, over time, Nemo's cat passed away, and he never retrieved the borrowed ACDC album. Only his sketchbook remained, leading him to the conclusion that, while cats die and music fades, art is for keeps. As a gesture of gratitude, Nemo decides to leave a farewell note on the wall for the owner to find. In the message, the art thief includes his reflection from his childhood, and then informs the owner that he was able to save three of his belongings from destruction while staying in his penthouse for a period of time. Nemo makes sure to emphasize in his note that, to him, the penthouse felt like a cage, and he expresses his sincere apologies for the destruction he caused, but also mentions that maybe the penthouse needed to be destroyed, stating that there's no creation without destruction. After crumpling some pages of his sketchbook in frustration, Nemo ascends his makeshift scaffold and pushes the skylight's panel, causing it to crash to the ground. He then vanishes from view, and his ultimate fate remains a mystery. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.